Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Garland here bringing you a new Neverwinter video. And today, as the title suggests, we're going to be taking our first look at the Bard Paragon spec of the Minstrel. Now, the Minstrel is the healing spec. We've already covered the DPS Paragon, which is Songblade. Uh, I will leave a link in the description to that video if you didn't see the DPS Paragon of Songblade on the Bard. I go through the whole process of that. So again, this will be another long video. We're going to go out and just read all the abilities and everything, take our first look. This is by no means a guide or anything to the uh, Minstrel Bard at all. This is just your first look as it sits right now. Now, of course, we are on preview. Everything is subject to change. The Bard should be coming with Mod 21, so still a few months down the road so there will be adjustments tweaks and everything made but i just wanted to get the information out there get a first look at everything so if you missed the video on the dps side of things make sure you go and check that one out and today we are going to be looking at the healing paragon which is the minstrel so a lot of these abilities are intertwined so we'll just breeze over those and really focus on the minstrel side of things so this video might be a little shorter than the dps one so without further ado, let's jump into it. Alrighty guys, and here we are. So this is the Healing Paragon, the Minstrel. So, let's go ahead and look at the At Wills. Now Reprise, I've already gone over in the DPS video. This is a delivers a four-hold attack to enemies in a cone before you. F physical damage, 35 magnitude. Same thing with Fletch. Fletch is on both Paragons as well. This is a single target Psychic damage, uh, 180 magnitude. Now we have whatever this is. Like I said in the DPS video, I can't pronounce half of these names. I am musically uh, inclined. I have no idea. No idea. So, Ap Ap Aparigio? I think it's Aparigio. Uh, it's hill target ally or self, 275 healing magnitude. Uh, the final at will is going to be Phantasmal Concerto. You channel to deal psychic damage to nearby enemies while moving at a reduced speed, and this has 70 magnitude. So this is like an AoE sort of thing here, where the other at will is a healing one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the encounters. Uh, again, most of these are the same as the DPS, so we'll breeze through them. We have Duet. This is the AoE. It delivers a two-fold attack to nearby enemies. Uh, it's arcane damage. It does 230 magnitude, and it does have a two-second daze. We have Lunge. Lunge at a target, dealing physical damage. It's a single target. It has a one-second stun, and it actually has uh, multiple charges on Lunge. So you have two charges with this, 400 magnitude each charge. Again, this is on the DPS Paragon side of things as well. We have Dancing Lights, uh, psychic damage to single target enemy, 700 magnitude, has a 3 second daze, uh, and it also has the added effect of decreases target's damage dealt by 5%, and that lasts 6 seconds on that debuff. Again, this is also on the DPS Paragon. We also have Flourish. Once again, also on both Paragon Trees, this increases the damage dealt or healing potency of your next encounter or song by 50%. Uh, and it lasts 9 seconds. So you cast your Flourish, and then you either cast a Attack or a Song, whether it be Healing or DPS. You get a 50% buff to that. So the last three encounters are specifically for the Minstrel. So we have Serenade. You tap it briefly to serenade your target, increasing the effectiveness of your heals on the target by 5%. This action does not trigger the cooldown of this power. This effect remains active until the target leaves the party, dies, or you cast serenade again. Hold down and release to increase the effectiveness of your heals on the target of your serenade by an additional 50%. So we have a lot going on here. Essentially, this is marking a target. So if you're familiar with the Healing and Neverwinter, uh, the Warlock and the Cleric, they both can mark their targets on their, he their Healing Paragon by hitting their special ability button, which in is Tab on PC. So since the Bard already has a special ability, uh, that being, you know, the bard can sing via its loot, they had to put the marked target somewhere else. 
So what they did is they made an encounter out of it. So uh, you can, you know, uh, basically serenade, a.k.a. mark the tank, and then increase the hills to the tank, essentially. And it's an encounter power instead of being, you know, the cleric's uh, special ability. So now we have delayed play. The next song you play will be stored rather than take effect immediately. This has a 12 second uh, duration. Your song will be stored, stored until you log out or change areas. You may trigger the effect of stored song instantly by, acti by activating delayed play again. So if you hit your delayed play button, you cast a song, you sing a song, that song goes into the delayed play slot. Then if you hit delayed play again, you can play that song again instantly. It's pretty nice. Essentially, you can double cast hills. So if you cast a healing song, it gets put in your delayed play slot. You can hit delayed play again and instantly use that same song over again. And then finally, we have Baseline, and this is your regeneration, essentially. So, you channel this to restore up to 200 performance while moving at a reduced speed. Performance restored and cooldown are reduced if the power is cancelled. So, essentially, yeah, this is just, uh, like, I think the Cleric has Divine Glow. Is that the regeneration on Cleric? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure it is. I have no idea. It's the one that gives you your divinity back. It's essentially the same thing with Baseline. It gives you a 200 performance boost if you channel it the whole way. So those are the encounters. Uh, I would actually have liked to see more, uh, but it is what it is, I guess. You know, Maybe they'll add more, but I doubt it. This is probably finished as far as the encounters go, and then they'll probably uh, just tweak the encounters they have. But I would have liked to see more for the Minstrel. Like, four of these abilities are already on the DPS Paragon path, right? So you're only getting three encounters that are actually just for the Minstrel alone. Uh, so I would have liked to have seen at least maybe even a fourth one. Four and four? I don't know. Just my opinion. The dailies. Now, Inspiration is the same as the DPS Paragon path. Uh, grants you and the nearest party member... Immunity to most control effects reduces incoming damage by 15% and increases outgoing damage by 15%. So I don't know if I mentioned this on the DPS video, but this isn't an entire group buff. This only works for yourself, and it works for one other ally. This is not an entire group buff, unfortunately. Like I said, it only works on yourself and one other party member. It's still pretty good, don't get me wrong, but just keep in mind, you're not buffing your whole your whole group with this uh, daily. Next, again, this is also on the DPS Paragon. Uh, we have Encore. It activates the last song you played without depleting your performance gauge. So now, now we get down to the nitty gritty. Now, I said this isn't a guide video, but I can discuss it in my own opinion after playing the Bard now for several weeks on preview. Uh, the Healing Bard... The healing potential is just outrageous, okay? So essentially, you can look at your healing things. You have Rejuvenating Carol, and you have Defender's Minuet, which we'll discuss when we get down to the songs. But you have two major healing songs, okay? So if you cast Rejuvenating Carol, and then put it in your quick play slot, or I'm sorry, your delayed play slot, you can cast it again. So you cast it initially, heal everyone. You can then cast it instantly with delayed play, heal everyone again. And then if you pop the Encore daily, you can pop it for a third time. So you can cast the song three times and heal everyone three times, if necessary, right? Obviously you're not going to waste it unless it's a dire emergency or a need, but I'm just saying, the healing potential on the Minstrel is silly. It's silliness. It's, it's really good, in my opinion. I would be surprised if they don't make adjustments to it. The last daily, finally, is the Curtain Call. It cancels all of your song effects on nearby allies and grants added effects based on the songs canceled. So Blaze restores 100 AP. Rejuvenating Carol is a 800 magnitude hill. Warding Carol reduces damage taken by 10%. And this lasts 10 seconds. Uh, and then the Sheltering Etude is a 800 magnitude shield 
and that lasts 20 seconds. So with the Minstrel, you can have a few songs going at once. So if you have, let's say, Blaze going and Rejuvenating and or Sheltering, if you have all three of those songs up and then you cast your Daily of Curtain Call, well then everyone's going to get restored 100 AP, everyone's going to get an 800 Magnitude Hill, and everyone's going to have uh, an 800 Magnitude Shield. Really, really good daily if used appropriately and the bard knows what he's doing and he's song twisting uh, accordingly uh, and you pop this daily. It's a nice little buff for everyone. Let's look at the mechanics. Again, your shift is your iframe. Uh, the tab is perform. We went over this on the DPS video. This enters your performance mode. If you hold the tab, you have the free performance mode. You have the Gift of Song increases your performance gauge by uh, to a maximum of 1,000, reduces threat generated by your healing spells, and songs no longer cancel the effect of other songs. So this, I believe, is one that is not on the DPS Paragon. On the DPS Paragon, you can actually only have one to one and a half. Now, I say one and a half because I'm not on the DPS Paragon, unfortunately, but like if you play your main song, uh, of like uh, still still March for instance if you watch that video still March uh, is a song that lasts 72 seconds however you can cast one of the ballads at the same time so you can have basically one ballad and one of the other three songs active now on the minstrel just by having this mechanic here which like I said I'm pretty sure that the song blade paragraph does not have this mechanic so the very last line is songs no longer cancel the effect of other songs so that's why on the minstrel you can do a lot of spell twisting and have multiple effects running at once uh, we have the natural talent here it just unlocks an additional quick play slot again the dps pa uh, spec the dps paragon does not have this mechanic so if we just click on the songs, see how we have two quick play songs on the Minstrel. The DPS only has one quick play slot. Music, uh, musician's Forte is just your Forte. Uh, so for Minstrel particular, it is Performance Regain, which is huge. You want to use as much Forte on a healer as you can. Uh, and then Critical Chance and Awareness. So all key important statistics for a healing class. Not only do you get the performance regeneration, but the critical chance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and the awareness. Very good, not bad. So let's look at the songs. Uh, the first one, Blaze, is on the DPS Paragon. It deals fire damage to nearby enemies. It's an AOE, 350 magnitude. Increases the magnitude of your attack actions by 20. Converts them to fire damage. Uh, 36 seconds increase the damage dealt by nearby allies by 2%. So it does have the 2% buff on this on Blaze. So everyone will get the 2% increased DPS. We have Rejuvenating Carol, which is again on the DPS side of things. Uh, it applies a hill over time to yourself and nearby allies. It's a healing magnitude of 100 and it lasts 36 seconds. We have Defender's Minuet. Uh, instantly heal the nearby party member with the least hit points. And it's a 2,000 magnitude heal. So this is essentially intercession on a cleric, right? I believe it's called intercession, where it's your emergency panic button, essentially, where intercession just targets the person with the lowest amount of HP. Now there's a catch to this one with heals the party member affected by serenade instead if there is one so if you have someone marked with serenade and you cast defender's minuet it's going to go to that person however if you don't have anyone marked with serenade then defender's minuet is going to just cast on whoever has the lowest hp so keep that in mind next we have the warding carol removes one negative condition from all nearby allies uh, and then it continually removes negative effects for 10 seconds so the instant cast of it will remove all of those negative effects. And then if someone happens to get another negative effect within that 10 second window, it gets removed again. 
So this is situational. You're only going to be using Ward and Carol in some, some dungeons that have negative effects, essentially. And then we have Aurora Fantasia. Grants the effect of Aphora, causing your attacks to deal additional psychic damage against all targets, 25 magnitude. Whenever you attack, you heal nearby allies with a, hif with a 50 heal magnitude. Uh, while under the effect of Aurora, perform changes to Aurora Finale. Aurora Finale ends the effect of Aurora Fantasia and deals psychic damage to nearby enemies. It's an AoE attack, 400 magnitude. It also heals nearby allies for 400 magnitude. Then we have Sheltering Etude. Uh, grants yourself and all nearby party members the effect of sheltering, restoring HP when their health falls below 50% or uh, upon expiration. It's a 600 hill magnitude. If a target is already under the effect of sheltering, the effect will apply its hill and end immediately as the new effect is applied. And then there's also two other ones uh, with... It's, you know, the Reprise Carol Enhanced, and then Reprise Carol Recovery, and this has to do with the feat of the Gambler, so you have to be using Gambler to have these activated, uh, and this is, cannot be put into the quick play slot, you have to manually play it, consumes all stacks of Gambler's Delight, and has a chance to gain, to grant one of the following offense, effects, I'm sorry, can't talk today apparently. Strength of the effect is based on the number of Gambler's Delight stacks. Uh, crit Severity, 2%. Uh, mitigation Bonus, 2%. Recharge Speed, 2%. And it lasts 15 seconds. If none of these effects is applied, then a hill over time will be applied to yourself and all nearby allies. And it's 100 hill magnitude, 15 seconds. And then we have Reprise Carol. Uh, same requirement. You have to be using the Gambler feet, and it can't be put into a quick play slot. Consumes all the stacks of Gambler's Delight and has a chance to grant one of the following effects. Same thing. Strength is based on how many stacks of Delight you have. Stamina, regen, uh, regen bonus, 10% every 2 seconds. A shield, absorbs damage, uh, regenerate every 5 seconds. And then AP, regen bonus, 4% every 3 seconds. So, it kind of reminds me of the Cleric back in the day with HP, uh, I'm sorry, uh, AP regeneration. It's not a lot, but it's not horrible if you could get that. The problem is, is that it's one random. You have three bonuses, and it could be the AP regen, right? It's 4% every three seconds. So that's... Uh, well, how long does it last? 15 seconds? So 15... Um, that's almost 20%. 20% AP if you would get that AP one back on this. Which isn't bad, to be honest. It's not bad. So those are the songs on the Minstrel. Let's go ahead and look at the class features. Again, uh, a lot of the same here. So Soloist is on the DPS uh, side of things as well. It's just when you're playing by yourself, it's 10% DPS, period. Uh, same thing with Song Ward. Whenever you are in performance mode, you absorb 50% of the damage. Blah, blah, blah. It's on the DPS mode. I suggest you guys watch that video. Uh, again, Mystifying Strikes. Again, on the DPS side of things. Your attacks now have a 5% chance to apply a uh, Mystify to the target, dealing psychic damage over time. It's 50 magnitude, and then when someone else hits that mob, it's 400. It's pretty OP. I, I described this in the DPS video. Uh, this is a very... Uh, overpowered class feature. Um, for Xandu, again, on the DPS side of things, whenever you play a song in combat, your damage and healing is increased by 5%. And then we have whatever whatever this says. This is for the at will, right? Reduces the magnitude to 100, increases the performance cost to 60, and extends the area of effect from a single ally to to all allies within 40 uh, feet. So this at will, if you were using it single target, it's 275 healing magnitude and it costs 40 performance. 
if you were using the single target. However, if you put on this class feature, the healing goes down by 175, the cost of it goes up by 20, but then it becomes a team heal. Uh, we have Vamos Ala. Uh, Blaze now increases the running speed of all affected by 10%. This effect expands to 20% when outside of combat. So we already know that movement speed is back in the game. Uh, plentiful now because the XP was removed out of the game. So Azor enchantments don't have XP bonus. Now they have movement speed. So you can get 25% movement speed just from having 5 Azors in. Well now, if you have someone using this, uh, this is another 20% out of combat. All right? It's crazy. It's crazy movement speeds in dungeons, if you wanted it to be. We have Play It Back. Aurora, maintained cost reduced by 10. Aurora Finale has a 20% chance to fire a second time. So, Aurora is this one. So, it has a chance to fire the second time, which is the Finale, which is a 400 magnitude AoE, and then it also... Heals AoE for 400. So while you're using this class feature, you actually have a, a chance to proc it twice. And then we also have Starstruck. Whenever you or a teammate is healed by Rejuvenating Carol, while it is not in a quick play slot, there is a chance that they become Starstruck. So the Starstruck effect Heals the affected player when they do certain things depending on their role. If you're a DPS, you get healed when you do a critical hit. If you're a tank, you get healed when you take critical damage. And when you're a healer, uh, you heal on a critical heal. So not too bad either. Uh, certain situations you'll be using Starstruck for sure. Alright, let's move into the actual feats here. Let's get down to it. So, the first one is Crescendo. For every 3 seconds you are channeling, magnitude is increased by 50 to a maximum of 425. So now, if you're not using specifically the class feature that turns it into an AoE hill and lowers it, if you use this feat, now you can increase this hill from being 275 all the way up to 475 for a single target hill. Um, and yeah, it just it cha you channel it. Every three seconds it goes up 50 magnitude all the way up to 425. So I'm actually curious to see what would happen if you take this feat and you take the class feature, what the actual numbers then are. <laughs> it's interesting if you would... If you take this feat and you still put the AoE one on, because this doesn't say anything about single target or AoE, right? So it just says for every three seconds you're channeling it, the magnitude increases by 50 to a maximum of 425. So if you take this feat and you take this class feature, changing it from a single target to an AoE, I'm curious how that works then. So does it just start as a, at a base of 100? And then if you channel it all the way up to 475? So instead of it starting at a base of 275 and then going up to 425, would you just start the base at 100 and then go all the way up if you channel it all the way up? It's interesting. It's just the things that need tested, I guess. Uh, and that is whatever this is. Domino? 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 I have no idea, guys. I'm sorry. The magnitude is increased to 500. For every one cycling you are channeling, magnitude is decreased by 50 to a minimum magnitude of 250. So what if you would mix and match this one then? So, what if I would take this, it says the minimum magnitude would then go down to 250. Would it actually drop all the way down to 100, though, if you turn it into the AoE hill? So, that's that's interesting on which one you would go. Obviously, you would go with the first one, most likely. You don't want the, the diminishing returns on this. Because this goes all the way up to 425. You're only gaining 75 magnitude, and then it starts to diminish or whatever. So, eh, it's whatever. Let's move on. 
We have the Art of War expands the effect of the final strike of Fletch to hit all enemies within 15 feet of the target. This final hit now deals an additional 150 magnitude damage against the primary target and costs 40 performance. The final hit now applies a stack of Art of War. So let's dissect the first half of this. First of all, Fletch is single target, okay? It's 180 magnitude. It does single target damage, one, one target. So if you take this, the last uh, strike of it, the final strike, it's a threefold attack. It doesn't actually tell you that, right? This actually attacks like three times. Uh, so the final attack of this becomes an AoE and it does an additional 150 magnitude damage. And then the final hit also gives you a stack of Art of War. So what is Art of War? Art of War converts dancing lights uh, after reaching three stacks. So you, you have multiple effects stacking on top of one another, right? So you have to be using Fletch. The final hit of Fletch gives you Art of War. Art of War converts Dancing Lights enhanced after reaching three stacks. So you have to be using Dancing Light. And then when you get three stacks of that, it converts into expands the area of effect of your next Dancing Lights to all enemies within 20 feet of the target and increases the damage against the primary target by 500. So again, a lot, a lot of things you have to understand in the mechanics behind this. So this is this is taking two abilities into effect here. You have to be using Fletch, which is single target. You have to be using Dancing Lights, which is also single target. They both then turn into an AOE on the final hit. All right, and then they do more damage essentially. And that goes with Rhapsody at Arms. Increased damage dealt by 1% and reduces damage taken by 1%. For every song you are affected by, and this doesn't specify, so if you have multiple bards in the group, if you have a DPS board in the group and he's using his DPS song, and then you have the healing board in the group spell twisting three or four different songs, then you can get up to 5% from this. Uh, I don't think you're going to go very much further than 5%. Um, maybe. You might be able to squeeze 6 maybe 7%. But a good bard, two good bards, if you have a really good healing bard and a really good DPS bard, you're going to average 5%, which aligns with all the other classes in the game. Usually our, our feat bonuses are about 5%. Give or take. So, yeah, decisions to make. It's either damage or the 5%. Because it's not only 5% damage, it's 5% uh, damage reduction as well. I would have liked to seen the damage change to healing potency, to be honest. Uh, you shouldn't be worried about DPS on the minstrel. That's not your job. That's not your role. So, increases the damage dealt should have been changed to increasing healing potency. So you have you have the chance to gain 5% healing potency as well as 5% damage reduction. That's, that's my opinion on it. Damage shouldn't even be a thing on the Minstrel. Next on the list we have Vamp. Whenever you play a song in combat, there's a 20% chance to gain the effect of Vamp. Activating delayed play will not clear the stored song okay so back to delayed play and encore so not only can you delayed play uh essentially three songs so if you cast your healing spell it gets put into delayed play you can cast the healing song again for a third time if you proc vamp Where's Vamp at? If you proc Vamp, it doesn't get taken out of the slot. So you can actually spam it. Now, I know Nova, your boy Nova, he's been loving the Minstrel. He's been testing the Minstrel. He's been playing the Minstrel quite a bit. Uh, I've seen Nova 
proc delayed play with the vamp ability here, the, the feet, like six times in a row. <laughs> that's like just non-stop healing folks that's just non-stop healing not only are you getting the initial heal but then when it goes to delayed play and you get vamp to proc it doesn't leave the slot so you can just cast it you just cast it it does have a cooldown but you can you can just keep casting it as long as you have vamp activated so there's that <laughs> So it's either Vamp or you're going to take this one, which is Sudden Muse. Every three seconds you are engaged in combat, there is a 10% chance to gain the effect of Hiller's Muse, uh, Warden's Muse, or Fighter's Muse. Hiller's Muse is the next time you play Defender's Minuet or Sheltering Etude, the magnitude of the hill is increased by 25%. The Warden's Muse is, the next time you play Rejuvenating Carol or Warding Carol, the duration of the effect is increased by 100%. And then the Fighter's Muse is, the next time you play Blaze or Aurora, it will not cost any performance. So, these are both very good. And the last tagline is, this effect may not occur more than once every 20 seconds, and only one effect may trigger. Now, Vamp is too invaluable in my opinion. You're, you're going to run Vamp. As a healing minstrel, you are going to run Vamp, in my opinion. Now, this one is good. It's good. But the problem is, is that you really have to be paying attention to what procs. Because if your healer's muse procs, then you need to be playing defender's menu, uh, minuet or sheltering etude. However, um, you can control the fighter one. So when you play Blaze or Aurora, it's not going to cost you any performance, right? Or the next time you play Rejuvenating Carol or Warding Carol, you know what I mean? Like, you have to kind of pick what what's going to happen here, right? And it, it, it's every three seconds. Every three seconds you are engaged in combat, there's only a 10% chance... To gain one of these effects. So. It, it could be good. They need to rework it. To be a little better in my opinion. But it doesn't come anywhere close. To what vamp does. You're, you're going to take vamp. So it doesn't matter. What this does. It needs to be reworked to make the choice of. Well certain situations. I might want to use sudden muse. And maybe not vamp. As it sits right now, that's the problem. Vamp is just too good. And you can say that with a lot of the Paragon Paths in the game. There are some feats on some Paragon Paths that it just doesn't make sense to take the other option. Because what the other option is just a thousand times better. And that's the problem that Neverwinter has, unfortunately. Is that they're not very balanced when it comes to the feat. You, you, you pick one or the other. So they both have to be equally valuable, in my opinion. Well, when you have something like Vamp that you you have to use it, right? To be able to spam heals non-stop? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it doesn't even matter what this says. It doesn't even come close to what the potential of Vamp can do. So that's my mini rant about that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you made it that far into the video so far, leave me a hashtag Vamp is broken in the comment section. Moving on. We have Desperate Finale. Whenever your performance gauge drops below 200, you restore 600 performance immediately. And this can only happen once every 360 seconds, which is the downfall to this one, right? You can actually only proc this once every 360 seconds. It's, it's outrageous. That, that needs to be way lower, in my opinion. And then it goes with the... Pianismo reduces the cost of Rejuvenating Carol to 75 and the magnitude to 80, reduces the cost of Defen Defender's Menuet to 120 and the magnitude to 600, reduces the cost of Sheltering Etude to 150 and the magnitude to 480. The magnitude of these songs is not reduced when activating them in Encore. So basically, if you do take this over this, uh, you're going to reduce a lot of the magnitude of some of these healing abilities, but you're also reducing the cost. So that 
it, it just depends. Do you want the long ass cooldown for the performance, or do you want to reduce your healing potential for less performance cost? All right, let's get into the big boy, the final feat for Minstrel. We have Storyteller. Whenever you play a song that is not in a quick play slot, grant Storyteller's boon to party members within 50 feet. The effect varies by roll, and it stacks up to three times. DPS, 5% increase. That goes to 15%. The tank gets DR. Decreased damage, 5%, stacks 3 times, goes to 15%. Uh, the healer increases outgoing healing, 5% times 3, 15%. So, essentially, you get that stack every time you play a song. So, uh, again, a good bard, a good minstrel, uh, that is going to be song twisting. You're, you need to have 3 songs activated to get that 15% uh, boost and it lasts 15 seconds. That's in comparison with Gambler. So while in combat, whenever you play Sheltering Etude, Defender's Minuet, Rejuvenating Carol, and they are not in your quick play slot, means you have to manually play them, guys, gain a stack of Gambler's Delight. Gambler's Delight effect allows the execution of reprised Carols. 15, per, or 15 seconds. If this effect time times out self and ally, all nearby allies receive a hill, 100 magnitude. So reprised Carol is applies one of the three group group buffs whose strength is based on the number of gamblers' delight stacks. The possible buffs depend on the Carol used. Lots of information there. Lots of information, lots of mechanics with the Bard. I know a lot of people are confused by this stuff. Again, this isn't an in-depth guide. Just to clarify, we're just reading over tooltips. This is just a preview of the Minstrel. I'm not going to get into the guide version of this. Um, me, personally, I would be going with Storyteller. You can't dismiss 15% damage to all your DPS and 15% DR to the tank. And if you're in a trow and you have two healers, 15% outgoing healing. I mean, Storyteller is just really good. Gambler is good as well. Don't get me wrong. Gambler, you could get into Gambler. You have good stuff with Gambler as well. But I do think that Storyteller outweighs the effects of Gambler. Again, very early. Just my opinion. Not an in-depth guide. We're still on preview. Everything is subject to change anyway. So then just the general, we have uh, Dark Fire because I'm a drow, so that doesn't matter. Uh, thievery is, uh, you know, your skill node kits. Uh, we have Hone Defenses, which again comes from my class feature, so that's irrelevant. It's, I think, the last three that are important. So Harmonize uh, increases passive action point regeneration. This is on both. Song Blade and Minstrel. Uh, we have Critical Tuning. After playing a song that is not in a quick play slot, you gain 10% crit, crit severity for 10 seconds. Again, this is on Song Blade. And then finally, we have the Truly Inspired. Uh, again, is also on Song Blade. But whenever you play a song in combat that is not in your quick play slot, you receive an inspiration based on your Paragon Path. So the Song Blade gains 10% damage, whereas if you're on the Minstrel, you gain 10% healing bonus. So there you have it, guys. That's everything with the Minstrel. Uh, once again, to clarify, very early preview cycle. Things are going to change. Things are going to get adjusted before the Bard does get released. Uh, the Bard will most likely be coming in Mod 21. We'll have to wait and see for sure. But that is everything with the Minstrel. I will leave a link in the description to the song blade. So now we have covered both Paragon Pass for the brand new class in Neverwinter. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Remember to smash the thumbs up button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. Uh, leave your questions, comments, and concerns below. I know a lot of people right now are worried that the Minstrel Bard is basically going to make all the other healers in the game obsolete. Um, and to be brutally honest truthfully it it does 
it does. The Bard Minstrel right now, as we sit of filming this video, it is June 11th. The Bard needs toned down on Minstrel, in my opinion, with the healing and everything. The buffs, the buffs could be overlooked. The buffs are a bonus to playing the Bard as a whole, but the healing potential, just the combos alone that you can do, uh, like I said, with the delayed play, uh, mixing it with the Encore, and then having Vamp multi-proc numerous times, non-stop essentially, and you could just spam 700,000, 800,000 hills. Yeah. Uh, why would you take a Cleric that, you know, doesn't have the buffing potential, right? Because that's the whole point of the Bard, is you're bringing a Minstrel because you want all of the buffs, but the Bard actually heals too. So, it is what it is. Again, my own personal opinion, you can argue that if you want, but Soul Weaver doesn't even compare, in my opinion. The Cleric doesn't even compare. Uh, the Paladin, not even a chance. Uh, so, we'll see what kind of adjustments and kind of balancing they do to the Minstrel overall. Because, you know, it is the newest class. Everyone's all about it right now. But they do need to get it somewhat in line with the other healers. Because, like I said, guys, there's just no reason to take a Cleric or a Paladin or a, a Warlock as a healer when none of those are bringing the major group buffs that the Bard can bring to the table. And the Bard has the healing potential of doing the healing that all three healing classes have already. So... We'll see what happens. Very early preview cycle. Hopefully they make some adjustments to it. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the board content. That's all I got for you folks. I'll see you guys real soon.